Okay, um, so the, uh, let's talk about distance functions a bit. So the distance function is really the only component of the uh, nearest neighbor algorithm where you have some freedom to pick and play around with different things. Uh, the distance function, it, that's what tells you which things are your nearest neighbors. Uh, and depending on how you define the distance function, you can get very different uh, classifiers and very different performance. So the most natural distance function for numeric attributes is just Euclidean distance or the L2 distance. Right? And here what you're doing is you're just taking, uh, for each attribute d, you take the difference between the testing and the training values for attribute d, square it, add it up. Uh, we know it. So um, Euclidean function, it's nice in many ways. It's symmetrical. It's spherical. Uh, it treats all dimensions equally. Um, a lot is well known about this function, so, so it's, it's, it, it's sort of a known uh, quantity. Um, uh, there are some downsides. So one of the downsides is it's very sensitive to deviations in a single attribute. Right. So, for example, if I have a thousand attributes and all of them are uh, sort of in the same range between the training and the testing point, but one attribute is off by a big number. So that big number is going to throw off the entire distance computation because that big number is going to get squared and it likely overrule, uh, uh, overrule the, the contribution of other attributes in the distance. It's the same effect that we had in the mean squared error when we talked about that in the last, in the last lecture. Um, so that's Euclidean. Um, and th this, by the way, should be your default choice if you're dealing with numeric attributes. If you're dealing with categorical attributes, your default choice is the Hamming distance, right? The Hamming distance, it just looks at each attribute and says, are they equal or not? Uh, if they're equal, then uh, uh, this thing is a zero. If they're not equal, then this thing is a one. So basically, you count how many different attributes are there between the two uh, instances. And that's a reasonable first choice for, uh, for a categorical uh, representation. Um, now, of course, that's not all. You have lots and lots of other distance functions. So let's, talk, let's briefly talk about some of them. Um, the, the family that I quite like is there, is there is a family of p-norm distance functions, which are generalizations of your Euclidean distance. Uh, and they're often underestimated, but they're actually quite flexible. Right? So uh, this looks like your normal Euclidean distance function. The only difference is instead of a square, I have a p there. Right? And that p is a free parameter that I can tweak. Uh, and I also take the p root. So if I set p equal to 2, I just get my Euclidean. So that's good. Uh, if I set p equals 1, I get Manhattan distance. right? So that's city block distance, where you just add up the differences ac across uh, each coordinate, uh, the absolute values, are, by the way, so uh, make sure that you have the absolute value in there. Um, um, but interesting things start happening when you set p to values that are other than 1 or 2. So as p approaches 0, this thing actually starts approximating uh, a Hamming distance. Right? So uh, why is that happening? Uh, think about what we are doing here. We have some number. And that number is going to be positive, and we're going to be raising it to the zeroth power. Right? Any number raised to the zeroth power is 1. Right? So it doesn't actually matter what the difference is. Uh, as long as that number is non-zero, I'm going to get a 1. Now, what if I take 0 to 0? You get a 0. Right? So what you, uh, what you get is a function where if this and this are the same, then you get a 0. And if they're different, you get a 1. And that's the definition of the Hamming distance. Right? You can take it the other way. If you make p very, very large, and Hamming distance, by the way, that's like, it behaves like a logical end of the, or, over the attributes. If you take it the other way, uh, it starts behaving like a max of the attributes, like a logical or. And very interesting things happen when p is between. Uh, between 0 and uh, 2. Uh, because what you get there is you get functions that, that, have, uh, that have pretty interesting shape. Right? So uh, what I'm showing here is suppose I have uh, two attributes. This is my attribute 1. This is my attribute 2. Uh, this is my testing point, A. And I have a bunch of different training points here. Um, so the lines the dotted lines and the solid lines, they, rep they represent ISO lines. So all the points on this line have exactly the same distance from my testing point. And you will see that these lines actually look very different depending on what p-value I use. So the dotted lines, this is what you get for p equals 2. Right? So that's our normal Euclidean distance. Right? That's 
It's like taking a fixed radius and looking at all the points that are that radius away from me. That's why it's circular. Right? If I set p to 0.7, my circles are going to look like that. Right? So all of these points would be the same distance away. Now, why would you ever want to have a circle that looks like that? Uh, you might, depending on what you're trying to represent about your features, right? So look at what Euclidean is doing to points B and C and D, right? So as far as Euclidean is concerned, B and C are the same distance from A, right? They're, they're at the same radius, and point D is a lot further. Now think about what this means logically. Logically, uh, points B and D differ from A only in the value of feature 2, only in the value of the second attribute. The first attribute is identical. Point C differs both in the first and the second. But the Euclidean treats it the same as B. Oh, right? So having a large deviation across one attribute makes a really big difference for, for a Euclidean function. It has a lot more effect than having simultaneous deviations across the first and the second attribute, as you have in the point C. And that's something that you might not want, right? You might want to give more credit to multiple deviation uh, along, along two different uh, attributes. And one way to do that with a distance function is just use a different p-value, right? So for p.7, d and c would be the same distance from a, and b would be much closer. So you can play around with, the, with that parameter to really change the geometry of your space in which k nearest neighbor um, operates. All right. Um, so if you have, uh, there's lots of other distance functions, I'm not going to spend much time on them. For histograms, scale divergence or the chi-square distance uh, tend to be uh, good choices. And then in some domains you have custom distance, distance, distance metrics that were defined for that domain. So for example, if you're working with text, you, you want to use BM25 and don't bother with anything else because that's going to work better than anything else. Um, 